All right, we'll call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to uh, approve the agenda. Is there any uh, anything we want to add? So Brian and Cecil, is all right if we add the Bethel ATV Club with you guys for your appointment to the Class 4 Road? Richard said you guys were here to talk about it. Okay, perfect. So we'll add them with that. All right. And uh, Richard gave me a map too, so I gave it to the select board members. So here. And then um, I think we we need to add Gilead Road because I had put um, Gilead in the town manager's report, but we need to talk about, I think I had. Anyways, we talked about it. We got to, we talked about it next week and we have, yeah, Gilead under town manager's report. So I think we should put that on the agenda to figure out what we're going to do there. We're receiving a lot of complaints about potholes and stuff. Okay. Make a decision. So we'll just put that on the end of the agenda. Sure. All right. Anything else? Oh, I got. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And first appointment, Ellie and the rec committee. Mm -hmm. I've got the Seaboard Park project all finished. Mm -hmm. It's looking good over there. And I'm here to promote that we want to have a wonderful official opening party. Um, we put it, we started planning it in our April minutes that we want to have it. So I'm here to get your approval and, and okay to have it Saturday, June 1st from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Recreation Center. We are uh, planning on providing um, refreshments such as drinks, cookies, popcorn, fruit. And last week, Chris Schwartz um, asked Lindsay Shell and I to look over at the Borat trailer to see what's in it and the, um, the stuff inside, do the inventory, see what's available in there. And that's another thing that we could use um, June 1st, because um, it's got tables, chairs, all kinds of things that we could use for this official party. So I'm here to get it, to promote, get your excitement and get the party um, plans rolling. Um, or, or officially started. so you'll talk to Dietrich about making sure the bathrooms are open I know we're we're just draining the pool today and then there Rick Pettit's coming to finish up some of his fiberglass work and stuff and then um so you're providing refreshments do you guys have a budget for where that money's coming out of um yeah, yeah we've, we've got volunteers um providing that the bake stuff and and you know we'll need uh, I plan to on, on um, talking to Deidre about the bathrooms. Oh, good. Um, the electricity, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah. in case we have music, we, we don't have music right now, but in case we get to have music over there, to, have, to talk about the electricity and um, to make sure about cleaning up the bathrooms after we yeah. use it. Use yeah, the it building. came out nice though. The sidewalk that REM was the contractor, they did a nice job. It came it out really did. nice. It yeah. looks really good. And, yeah. Um, and I understand, I've heard that it's been um, utilized um, um, no, wonderfully after. So, so, and we did a wonderful cleanup job, green up job at the rec center. On Green Up Day, we got lots and lots of cigarette busts that day. So Not anyway, <laughs> but it's all all nice and that was a nice video. You had the GoPro. What? The GoPro camera. Oh. You on the Facebook? Yeah, the video. Oh. Pretty, pretty. Yeah, I don't have Facebook. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for mastering that. So yeah. So so. So you all planning to be there? Is it okay to go forward on it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, I have want to do some other things this summer. Oh yeah. Get some coffee. Yeah, we, um, we've got funding for this. 
in the workshops that were um, there and kids to come to play and um and for parents who just have free time. Um, um it's called uh kids and coffee and um uh, Mary Shell is um um uh, uh, the school and community coordinating uh, is funding it for us, so we don't have any expenses for that. And uh, so um, we're excited about doing that. Kyle Cartwright is going to have his third annual pick flip um, skateboard um, workshop. And um, we also are working on trying to um, get a bike maintenance workshop so um we can teach kids how to take care of their bikes their scooters their skateboards so we're working on having that as a workshop and so the committee you know wants to have uh, a number of these things going on to have a really fun active recreation center this summer that's a super idea yeah. So we we uh, we are planning to have a busy summer, have a fun summer. We, as I mentioned in at uh, your November um, select board meeting, that we want to break from all the hard work we've been doing. <laughs> so that's why we want to have a activities and fun and and do stuff with kids and families and and have a real fun summer break by having other things that we're doing this summer. What do you think? Okay. okay. And then I know that the rec center the survey is done sometime over the summer. Uh, I think we should have the same. Yeah, Kelly will get back to you. She yeah. wasn't um, she did, she'd been out. And so I did yeah. remind her of your email. So she figures you're right. And she miscounted. So she was going to she was going to reach out to you. Right. Yes. Yeah, she, she looked pale. Yeah. yeah. She's so. going to sit. So, yeah. So, sometime this summer, we're happy to have a conversation about yeah. the rest of the Absolutely. Yeah. They haven't seen it yet. So, you, yeah. you're the only one who's seen the results. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kelly, because she dug yeah. them up. That's as yeah. far as we got. I told her to work with you to make sure they were accurate before we did anything. Right. <laughs> right. So, thank you so, for that. So, yeah. So, all right. Thank you for your support and your approval. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ellie. All right. Joanne? Well, actually, it's going to be Ken. Ken Goss. Okay. He's the chair for our War Memorial. Do you have everybody that you need? or what? We're a little ahead of schedule. Or you have everybody oh, yeah, here? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Well, if Joanne may have met you, we're endeavoring to set up a War Memorial. And what we're looking for is um, a place to set it up. And we kind of like the idea of the park over there where the bandstand is. Um, but we need permission for that. We're going to institute a fundraising campaign very shortly. We're looking for a goal of about $30,000, which we think we can get uh, with some additional like DFW and other organizations like that. Um, We have in contact with various builders and sign people to help us erect this thing. I have some preliminary drawings here that I would like you to, if you want to look at, but we have collected to date about 900 names. And that's from the uh, French and Indian War right up through Vietnam. Uh, the Gulf War and Afghanistan is still yet to come. This. Is just this is a life size example of what the boy will look like. This is engraved on stainless steel. Oh, wow. So it'll last for hopefully almost forever. Uh, and they're easily readable within five or six feet. So I'd like to show you just some pictures of we have two sites to choose from. I'm not an artist, so to give the thing one is. We do realize you already had given us permission to erect one at 
um, fortitude. fortitude, but we really didn't feel that that was going to be accessible for anybody with a handicap. And that was on stone, right? We would think when, when we got a price for that, <laughs> we got like 60000 and even higher. And there was no way we thought we could raise that kind of money. Mm -hmm. So we've gone to this uh, point. Did everybody see these? I, oh, no, I guess I should have passed them back. Would it be decided because we have so many names? Would it be people be able to walk around it? Okay, I wasn't sure. I know. I was... So we can yeah, we're this way. Yeah. yeah. Seven feet tall. More visual for Pinter coming from the park. Mm -hmm. Made out of lumber, built in four blocks. Okay. So it would be protected with a level from snow and rain and whatnot. Right. So that's what we're endeavoring to do. And we'd like the permission to accept it up to talk because of, it's easily accessible. And then we kind of feel that it fits in with the sign that's already on the bandstand and the dedicated for those who serve. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so it would require a zoning permit. So while the select board could give you their blessing on moving forward, you still have to get a zoning permit. So the zoning would trump the select board's decision because the select board can't invalidate zoning and and i am the zoning administrator but i can't tell you what it says right off the top of my head but i know there's a thing about signs so it may be like sizing or width height that sort of thing so i would have to look i don't i'm sorry i don't have the bylaws with me i didn't think i should have looked okay well we can work through it together necessary yeah the height and the width of uh, yeah. and the construction of it. It's going to be set up against the trees there. And there's still the walk, walkway between that, the front of that, and the, the bandstand and the, the, yeah. the fence with yeah. the walls. And then would the historical society take responsibility for maintaining it moving forward, or would it become a town thing? No, we take care of sign yeah. and anything like that. It will probably be insured. Oh, we right. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, for fortitude is tough. If yeah. you were right, if you were in a wheelchair with a walker, yeah. it would be very difficult. Yeah, I like it on the right side of the band shell. Then people can come right from the parking lot and not walk in front of the band shell way over here where it's a little not as easily ex as accessible. But yeah, that'll be great. I like that. Thank you. Any <clears> other questions? <throat> No, can I just see the pictures again? No, that's fine. No, no, fine. I just wanted to look at it. I think, yeah, I think Denise is right on the. Can you look at the, the uh, memorial in uh, Royalton? How many names are on that memorial? Do you know? I, I really don't know. I honestly don't know. I, that I, one is two sided, if I remember right. right. The, the, map, 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 I know the size of it. Because I look at it because okay. my family's on it. Yeah, I went and researched every war memorial within. 50 mile area from here, including the one that's the best hospital. And counted names, and this is where we got all the designs and drawings from and ideas from. Mm -hmm. But doing it in the granite, wait, wait. Yeah. 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 Easy. Yeah. We don't have it. No. Mm -hmm. What was, what's the stone, and, and maybe. Doug or Joanne would remember if you don't know. In the front of the band sand, we're going to put the two benches um, that Tim's family donate or had, you know, raised money for. They're going to go there. And there's a stone right there. What's that? Do you, I, I've looked at it, but I can't remember. What's that stone? School or something? There's, uh -huh. a, there's a date on there for that. And then the other one is the, the stone that he mentioned. Okay. So there's. Who served. For, yeah. right, so for those, so I the thought there was one, a, some sort of form. It says yeah. Yeah. the former site of Whitcomb High School. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. I was just curious. I just to that effect, I think. All right, all right, excellent. No. So yeah, so it, you would, it would, with the select board's blessing, it's going to still require that you have to go through zoning because whether or not um, myself or Kelly can approve it, or it might have to go to the DRB depending on setbacks, et cetera. I just can't. I apologize. I can't quote you the statute without no. I didn't know what the drawing was going to look like, but we can work through it. 
I'll follow up on that directly. Okay, sure. Let's talk um, to Kelly and we can, yeah. we'll see your drawings and then we can kind of go from there looking at it. And um, I would assume that you were also going to ask the select board to waive the zoning permit fee. Well, that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> 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 Do we have a question? Didn't vote it yet. What's everybody's box? Mm -hmm. Yes, for me. No, we still have to go in front of zoning. Right. Yeah, as, as, as long as you guys, we're, we'll have to sign the permit as the landowner. So that's, they need your permission to move forward with it, but okay. Thank you. thank you. Well, thank you. So when you go to, I was going to say, I'm sorry, when Ken, yeah. right, when you go to do the fundraising thing, certainly uh, Joanne can reach out to Kelly. You know, we're happy to put stuff on our uh, Facebook page or front porch forum or our website for you. Um, so certainly feel free to use that as a, as a tool to get the word out when you're ready to do your campaign. Mm-hmm. Also, we're going to mail tax bills in July. So if you were ready and you wanted to help do an insert, you would hit 1,200 and some odd envelopes. So that's also something to consider. Yeah, just let me know. All right. All right, anything further on that? Okay, hear none. Move on to public comment. If there's anything that's not on the agenda that um, anybody would like to bring up, that would be the time. Yes. No, I just wonder about an update on the action there in Gilead. The well, on the has become an agenda item. I said that has become an agenda item. It's on the agenda. So oh, it is? yeah, yeah. Well, we added, we added, we added it. it. It was in the town manager's report, but we got some numbers in, so we're going to add it. Yeah, so we'll do that. And, and just to, you know, I just just so everybody kind of, and granted there's only a dozen of you here, but so we were looking at the um public comment period, so like traditionally what a public comment period really is is just anybody in the town can come and can speak on whatever they want. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be followed up by anything from the board, but it could just be like, I'm airing whatever my grievances are to the board and then you just go on from there. And I know we've kind of have developed like a hybrid method here, like over the years where typically like a lot of towns won't let people talk about the items at hand when we're, when we're going through them. Um, over the past few years, we've, you know, Usually we have a very small um, amount of people that come and we typically do converse with people that are here or online if, you know, mm -hmm. um, through the items. So it's been kind of convenient over the years so that normally now we just say anything that's not on the agenda, you know, because most of the time people are here to talk, you know, maybe to have input on one of the agenda items. And and we've always been really good at just um, giving everybody that opportunity. So um so is there anything else on public comment that's um there's only Christy's the only one online. Christy, do you have anything? Or are you just listening? I'm just listening. Okay. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, good to see you all. Thanks. Anybody else? All right. So here and none, we will just uh, move on to the first agenda item. So there's relocation adjustment order um, between the town of Bethel and GMP, Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and EC Fiber due to Vanilla Bridge. So I had the, um, we got a sample from the state of Vermont because we've never done a relocation adjustment order and then um, had, well, probably Brian's familiar with them, but I wasn't, we'd never done one. And so um, I sent it to the town attorney to have them look it over. And I also worked with um, Jamie Roy from VHB and Caleb Holly of GMP. So basically GMP is moving the poles at no charge to us so that we can put the bridge in. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is you set a time for GMP to, they will remove, move the poles. And then you can set so much time in between for each of the other mm -hmm. um, 
utilities to remove mm -hmm. to move themselves from the poll. So obviously at this point we're looking at a 2020 five construction date now for Pinello Bridge. So it gives us a chance to get the power poles moved and everything. So um so anyway, so this requires the signature of all the board members. So this actually sets a date that they must follow. Yep. Wow. Exactly. No cost to you. At no cost to the town. What is the penalty if they don't follow? Yeah, then you have to call the PSB and they start harping on them and it's a it's a thing. It's a process. <laughs> or we guess we accidentally what, scared down one. While we're going down this road, what's the process to get the old polls taken? Oh, I've already, downtown we've been talking to PSB effort. about that. They call and then they end up you you put a formal complaint into the <laughs> PSB public service board and then they call the utilities and and on it goes from there. But um so this, a copy of this, once you sign it, will go to GMP and then it goes to Comcast. And I'm not sure I was going to ask, um, I'll have to see. I, I had assumed that I file a copy with the public service board as well, but I got to find out. I'll send it to my contact there, Justin, just to do it. But um, so Caleb, I looked it over. I made sure the dates were good with GMP since, you know, the ones that got to do the big work. So, So that's what it is so that we can put the um the new bridge in well just so you would just need a motion to to approve or authorize and then you all have to sign it okay all in favor Aye. so here's the page you need to sign so uh, okay Julie, do you have a pen? Can you borrow Paul's? Can you sign as a witness? Paul has a pen. Maybe he'll let you borrow his. He's gentlemanly that way. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit more. He wants to worry about the bridge. Then we. Big banks almost all eroded at this point. Yeah. And the bridge will have to be twice as long. Yeah, bridge to nowhere. No, seriously. Should build a floating bridge. Yeah, there you go. Might have one from Brookfield. Yeah, right. Don't have to worry about it. Sure enough. Actually, I was looking online making a uh, a drone car now. A drone car? Yeah. So probably could buy a couple of them, be a lot cheaper than the bridge. Yeah. Maybe. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. All right. Anything further on that? Nope. All right. And then we have um we have two gentlemen that want to join the class four road committee for souls. And once you're on, you can't get back off. It's just it's a one way thing. You know, you're on for life at this point. <laughs> so so Brian Wright, Cecil Washburn. We just need a motion to appoint. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then while we're on that, we had some corrections. The ATB club had a correction to their map. Yeah. Um, so Richard, I'll tell you what Richard told me, Cecil, and you guys tell me if, we, if I got it right. He said that basically you wanted to leave the part that the select board approved before in case you get that loop built in the future. But what you wanted to do now is to go for approximately two and a half to three miles from the part of Dart down to the Stockbridge town line and that you were going to post it at 15 miles an hour. And that's running on 
Gay Hill. Okay. So uh, he left a map and then I just had circled and wrote some notes on it for the select board. So was that the deal? I asked Richard if he could guesstimate. Okay. Send me a message. 0.83 of a mile. It's that's it all the yeah. way from no, dark from, from the church from the church to the town line. Okay. And it's so but way. from where you want to go to dart all the way to the town line, is that two and a half miles maybe? Give or take. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um so what happened to the, I guess I didn't catch with Richard, what happened to the other loop? Would something just, the one you wanted last time just didn't pan out, the, the connector? The person didn't um, come across here. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're still working on different loops. So There you go. Yeah, he talked about it. And and um, so, all right. So, and he said you were going to post it at 15 miles an hour. So. But anyway, so I tried to give you guys the map and just kind of circle from point A to point B. And then you're still, once you're done, you'll get an updated map like we had before that when it, this is like 2021 from the quad runners or something, so. Any discussion on that? Any concerns or? With it? Dates, if you want it. Well, there'll be posted this year the season and then those will come down and. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Get you guys all set. I think you need a motion for that because yeah. you're using town highway. Yeah. All right. Just need a motion to amend ATV's map for 2024. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Set. And let's see. Oh, so LV is here. LV, um, willing to serve on equity and inclusion committee. And you said you'd been to a couple meetings before. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. So just need a motion to appoint. So second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 There uh, and there's no current terms, I'll be like, you know, serve for three years or you just serve for forever, forever, <laughs> as long as you can. Don't get no off anymore. That's right. <laughs> we won't approve the removal. That's yeah. right. So. The only way to get off is find someone to take your picture. There right. you go. That's probably something you should do. But yeah, so thank you. That'd be great. <laughs> and Brian, did you get your package? I did. Okay. I'll be smart. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're all cool. Yeah. 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 I asked Albie that earlier. So, because I hadn't heard from him, but you're almost busy. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then we have the discussion of suggested operating guidelines, SOGs, and suggested operating procedures, SOPs, at the Bethel Fire Department. So Gary wasn't going to be able to be here tonight, but I made you a list of the 17 that you have. <laughs> and um, obviously Gary has been very busy. I looked through the ones like application procedures, descriptions, things that went in conjunction with our existing personnel policy. But Gary has obviously been very thorough. He even, you know, we provided him with a copy of, of their like, vehicle insurance policy so that he could make sure that everything um obviously agreed with our insurance as far as vehicle operations and motor vehicles. So, and some of this stuff has already been signed by firefighters, uh, general conduct, uh, chain of command, that sort of thing. So really what we're looking for is, as we said before, is really just a blessing. Obviously we can edit it for some things, but certainly content is really Gary's, um, you know, Gary's Avenue. He also had, had these reviewed, of course, by the assistant fire chief and um there'll be more to come but it um you know they'll have a whole you know package of them to go so together and then of course they'll be all ready for all the 
firefighters. I scanned every section and I yeah. mean, yeah. he's got the I's and the T's taken yeah. care of. And we you know some of them, I like the, the um, SCBAs, you know, that policy is like 20 some odd pages and it just felt for transparency's sake, it made sense to just give you everything. And then it's also in the packet. So it's online. So, um, so that, uh, you know, residents can see it and it's a lot to it. I know Gary has been working. Um, the only question I had was, What's next? What's the implementation? Of the next? Review this with each individual firefighter. Do they have to review, sign, or is it a group thing? Or? You review them at um, at their meetings. Yep. So yeah. once they, some of you know, obviously they require his signature. So he wanted to put them in front of the select board, and then he'll review them and hand them out at the um, at their meetings. And you can see some of them require a log where people have to sign, and and then once they have signed them um and their signature on it then it comes to the town office and is put in their personnel policy uh, or personnel policy personnel file excuse me so um we have copies of those so then you'll have a full binder the next thing that i expect to see is going to be their um he, they're creating a a manual or a um yeah not so it's the right word but they're creating another document that's outside of the SOGs and the SOPs. So I expect to see that next. He's been working on it. And I think that Greg was editing that. And, and I know they're even working on um, guidelines, SOGs and SOPs for swift water. So this is going to be a process. You're gonna see quite a few of these, I think over the next you know, several months. Now, Gary wanted a uh, Gary wanted a liaison from the select board. No, nope. oh, okay, I'm trying nope. to remember when. No, nope. he is he's ago. he. Oh, he said that people, you know, you could attend their meetings. Um, but what he, uh, we have reached out to um, a business person in town, and they're considering taking that spot on the advisory committee. So they're uh, Gary provided them with some documentation about what he where he wants to go with it. So that um, so they're thinking about that. I expect we'll have an answer from that person in the next couple of weeks or so, um, as their schedule clears up a little bit. Maybe and a one-time subword. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we'll so they're you know working on that, and then of course he's reaching out to any um, firefighters, um, you know Bethel firefighters that are retired or handy. yeah either retired or you know whatever. Sometimes people just have to go for family reasons. They're just so busy. So um, let's see how that goes. Are all the requirements being met by everyone there now and moving forward? Like nobody's grandfathered in, like this all has to be met. Well, I think forever. that what you may see is that there's some, What I think that's why when you see the, um, like for example, <laughs> position descriptions and responsibilities, they had a couple that were called senior firefighters, or there are some people that still, that will be there that maybe have been firefighters for a long time that have not um, had the ability to complete firefighter one, but have taken other trainings. Yeah, so I mean, it certainly will be made available to them, but a lot of it comes in how people can be, um, you know, he, Somebody doesn't have the high school diploma or the GED, then you have to go do that or you are right. done. Right. And okay. he's actually, what he's doing right now is a lot of the applications from original, from long-term firefighters, they hadn't been able to locate. So I don't know if we got from the move from here to the station or what, um, but so pe they're having people redo applications and he's been working with Dietrich on a big spreadsheet to make sure that everybody has all their I's dotted, T's crossed and forms in. So, Perfect. Yeah. So no, but it's going well. And we've heard from another uh, town that is actually looking for copies of this stuff. Once Bethel's done, they want to have copies because they need to do this at their own station. So we have received that request as well. So do they have, I mean, he's not here tonight, but I'm just assuming when I was looking through it this weekend that they have specific things that they can't do. Like, you know, I was just thinking through pre-employment screenings that a lot of um, employers have that aren't on here, like a physical test or, you know, because they mentioned firefighter requires great physical effort, right. therefore, you know, but it doesn't say like must take a physical we or, can't. Or, um, or drug and alcohol, you know, or those types of things. Municipality can only allow um, physical or can only mandate physicals and drug and alcohol for obviously if you had a police department, but CDLs. 
Hmm. Other than that, you can't. But um, certainly encouraging good physical fitness is just great for their insurance rates as well as around him. That big truck's gonna you gotta have a CDL to drive that truck. No. It doesn't weigh 60, 26, 000 pounds. Doesn't matter hour. because they're because they are emergency services, they do not require CDLs. Great guy. <laughs> it's not our rule. That's just <laughs> the rule. <laughs> here's, here's the farmer here. <laughs> so there is something in there though about drug and alcohol. Like if a firefighter goes to the scene and well, yeah. like beer. Yeah, like yeah there's some yeah. conduct pieces that's, that's like right. yeah. no, but you yeah. can't like normally like you would free employment, you would, you yeah. know. Right. Yeah. Go through well, it used to be everything now exempts marijuana, but right. You know, um, and we only can do that if they have a CDL. That's hmm. different from municipalities versus your business. It was definitely like like Paul said, it was pretty thorough. Mm -hmm. Um it was definitely way more in detail than I had envisioned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's and and I'm assuming that he probably has these templates from another agency or my i mean i had provided him some from another town and then there's some he's i know he's written from scratch and yeah. um definitely a lot of time put into it. yeah he's he's certainly pulling his weight that's for sure okay. so just need a motion to adopt these so moved second you know all in favor all right. All right. is there anything that the board needs to sign off on these nope. or no and discussion on phase two water project so i have uh richard and i have our first meeting tomorrow here at uh, 9 a.m so hebert obviously has started um there have already been a couple project changes i think i have a schedule in here um yeah, this thing. yep very light yeah so thank you so there's a um We've already done a couple of changes. Um, the water line that goes a little ways past Bicentennial up to the town garage actually <clears throat> was replaced not long ago. So we're actually not doing that part of the service since it's in good shape. We don't need to. Um, and then, so, which is good news, saves us a little money there. Then we also had um, down at the bottom where they were doing a connection today, the water was off because they were connecting a valve for, you know, shutoffs for Sand Hill and which and what Tim had done several times in the first $2.8 million project we're trying to do here, which is Richard said, you know, we should add a valve there, Therese, so that when we have to shut off, if we had to do like part of Pleasant Street or Church Street, you know, you're, you're not inconveniencing so many people. So that's what they were doing today um, was installing, you know, the valves right there. So their schedule is obviously temporary hookup. So people on Sand Hill, um, if you drive up Sand Hill, you're going to see a lot of blue pipe and it's just their temporary water and they'll be running off that for a while. Um, then they're obviously started uh, the new eight inch main on Sand Hill and they're going to start excavation for the Crystal um, Drive booster station, which is on uh, Royalton Hill Road. They're expected to start that this week. Um, next week, they're hoping to complete their eight inch main on Sand Hill and get the concrete work done at the booster station. And um, we are gonna be replacing a couple hydrants on Sand Hill. One of them isn't that old, so we are gonna get those parts to be able to reuse it somewhere else. Um, and then the last part of the month, there are the new service lines on Sand Hill, along with the booster construction. And where there's been a delay, I know that uh, Jesse and Owen have been waiting to find out when they're going to do the rail crossing, directional boring, but there was a delay in the permitting there, so I haven't heard a date yet. Um, so also in June, they'll do the Geico well house and then hopefully headed back up to Crystal Drive. Um, that was just pretty wet for them. So they decided to start on Sand Hill because Crystal Drive was so wet. So is it taking up the pavement on Sand Hill? Is that part of the other part of the project or well it's the it's the part we haven't been out yet right. so what's going to happen is my guess is that and i have an email out to mike Maynard. i haven't heard from him they'll probably end up doing a temporary patch you know temporary like a trench paving you know that one side because you just can't keep it open i don't i don't expect us to do the rest of the project or do a final paving until fall so when we'll do the sanders grant and the stormwater right. but it would be nice to get that out. But I did request that we bid the paving separately so that, you know, if Hebert wins the bid, 
to do the stormwater work, then I did ask to bid the paving separately. So that way we could see what our pricing is and just get someone to come in who does that. So, so that's still, I'm still waiting on that. I'm hoping maybe Jameson from Aldrich and Elliott has more information tomorrow on the status of that. So they're here. So obviously we're going to have, excuse me. Yeah. They talked about having two crews and um, so I think last year was a little bit weird just because of the July flood event. They were trying to, they had been doing work in Montpelier, then the flood. And then we said, you know what, look, if you need a month, hold off. And I think they came with a crew, but I, I last I heard they were talking about two crews, but I'll have more information tomorrow about that. But yeah, but so far they're, so they're here. Hence why we see the shutoffs on Facebook and front porch forum, but it doesn't affect the whole town, just the sections that are under construction. Anything further on that? Okay. Uh, and then next is just discussion on moving the next uh, meeting to the Tuesday instead of the Monday of Memorial Day. Do you want to have a Memorial Day um, bow wow? Well, we've done it <laughs> repeatedly. So the idea sure. right now would be to host it on Tuesday rather than Monday. I just didn't know about anybody's schedule. What about your golf schedule? Is golfing Wednesday? Golfing is Tuesday. You're right. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. So is that? Oh, well, check. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I, I kept thinking you golf Wednesday. That was like. No, you're right. Know. It is Tuesday. Wednesday. Only just started. So. Uh, it's okay. You can you know you know change it. No, no. I'm Chris is checking his schedule, yeah, and I'm good. Jordan's checking yeah. his schedule. So. Uh, let's check the board actually. All right, there you go. I think he's still looking. Yeah, Tuesday doesn't work for me. So Tuesday doesn't work for you. It doesn't work for Paul. 29th, Wednesday. Is that good for you? Yep. Can you do Wednesday? Yep. Denise, does that screw you up? I'll do it in, yeah, I can do it in. I'll just skip that meeting. Can you do Wednesday? What about you, Dave? Oh, I can do I can do Monday. Dave's like he doesn't care. He's retired now. He can do whatever he wants. Whenever retired? He wants. Oh, I'm tired. Yeah, 29th. The 29th. Okay, so we're gonna do it Wednesday. Oh, oh no, I should have checked. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Look at my calendar. Oh no, planning commission is this week. Okay. Yep. So Wednesday the 29th. All right. So we'll have Pam change our fancy new sign. Came out good, and it? Dick did such a good job. It came out really nice. Yeah, Dick did a good job. It's easier to read. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to slow down. <laughs> oh, oh no. Well, that's well, not, see, not the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You want to talk to Dick about the one that covered for your warm memorial sign? Oh, Dick Burnham, talk to him about doing a cover for you, the war memorial. Oh, thank you. Does anyone more songs? Probably not after that one. <laughs> he loved it. He loved it. All right. Okay. And then we had added the Gilead Road discussions. We had right. talked last time about old patch in and long term, short term. Yep. So we did. We talked about, I think you'd had an estimate of like 32 to 35,000 to take it to dirt. Obviously, we're, we received a lot of complaints about the pothole, pothole situation on good. And we talked about the fact that the paving is trashed and we're probably about seven years out from doing anything. I know Brian's suggestion last time had been to take it to dirt. Um, Jeff Gilman had suggested doing bigger patches, you know, sections. And so we have an estimate to do that is um, $172,000. And we have an estimate, it'd be about 510,000 to do the whole, so a half million to do the whole thing and about 175 to do, and basically to do an overlay, which may last a few years. Yeah. But neither one of those 
any jobs are going to do what we should do. The, the half million is. You want to go down two, three feet and build a base? The half yeah. million the is. The half million is. Yeah, the well, half you're not going to go down two, three feet. feet you just, but, well, you just yeah, go down and. Put Christian Hill, by the time they ground it up, it was two, there was two feet of material that was moved and added. No, no, couldn't. Yeah, so this so is. Half a million dollars would be a very similar process to what we did in um, Christian Hill. Um, the the problem with the patches right now is like I went out and looked at it, I don't know, Friday or Thursday of last week and like just trying to group the potholes, right? I mean, there's you can <laughs> if you've been out there, there's there's kind of changes of pavement, old pavement. I mean, it's all old pavement, but some that's in better condition than others. Yeah. And by the time I grouped it together, it had like eight locations throughout that road. If you grouped them together, and the eight locations was about two thousand feet of road, which the whole road's seventy two hundred feet. So you're you know, at that point, we were almost a quarter of the road just doing these patches. And then when you figure out digging it out, you know, like three or four inches deep and then patching those areas, it's expensive, um, it, way more expensive than um, taking it to dirt. And and it's, um, you know, at that point, you're you're almost a half or a third to a half of the cost of what the total project would be. And you would only do less than a quarter of the project. You know what I mean? So it, yeah. it really doesn't financially make sense to do it that way. Um, so when you say, um, so if we do go out and take it down, so that's when they basically, the machine comes in and just, just grinds yeah, it all up. Grinds so, the back the dirt, yeah. And then would we need to, I asked Morgan this day, we talked a little bit about it. I had sent him the estimate and got his opinion. So he and AJ think that it should just be taken back to dirt. And then he's like, you're already great. And you could just grade there. And <laughs> obviously once it's done, it would be chlorided. And I said, but you're talking about <clears throat> taking it to dirt and leaving it dirt for five to seven years. And there's no money, state money to do this because it's a class three road. So um, would <clears throat> the 32 to 35,000 is just us going having paying someone to go in and do that they're not adding material they're not fine grading they're nope. would it well i mean they'll grade it but that's it i mean you're would it require um after that's done i don't know how much that stirs up would it require material being brought in or is that really going to depend on what we see when the pavement's well up and yeah i mean there's no i mean all you're doing is you're you're <clears throat> just grounding the pavement into whatever the existing sub base is and then, so if the existing sub base is decent gravel, then you'll have a decent gravel surface. If this sub base <laughs> is not decent material, then you're going to have a not decent material. I mean, it's you know, it, it it looks like, and from what people have told me, that <laughs> when when they decided to pave that section of road, they never did any upgrades to that section. They right. came in, you know, they graded it and paved it. You mm -hmm. know, and so and that's most of the failures you have out there is because the sub base isn't what mm -hmm. it should be um they should have added a substantial layer of gravel mm -hmm. and a lot of the and a lot of the that road you can see it that doesn't shed water i mean the right. water sits in the road and then deteriorates mm -hmm. pavement plus that pavement's got to be what <clears throat> i don't know the pavements by looking at it, it's got to be 20 years old Please. so yeah. and you know on the life cycle of pavement in vermont is 11 to 12 years so it's you know it's something that hasn't been maintained but at the same time the original build of it wasn't really done correctly so so no, would they to, to, to grind it, um, compact it even graded so would I, they roll it oh i definitely i would hope so i mean is that once they yeah like the, what's the word reclamation is yeah, that the, you so when you put, reclaim it and then they go in and they roll it and yeah, grind you just, it and, you put a well if you want <clears throat> so what you could do is well put it out to bid obviously mm -hmm. and you could do it two ways you could um, in your bid, you could have it set up to do chloride, um, which typically you put like three quarters of a gallon per square yard in the initial mix mixing of it. So you go through and you just chew up the whole pavement mm -hmm. and then, and then you remix three quarters of a gallon per square yard of chloride into the mixture. And, and then you put a quarter on top, like a cap, uh, which is more of like a, a dust control cap. Cause when you, when you go around and just apply chloride um in the town i would assume that's probably more like a quarter of a gallon per square yard which is yeah. more just like dust control not really meant yep. to um that'll help like bind it keep it together and then better they um, and they roll it yeah uh you know so there'll be 
you'd have it uh compaction and then and then grade mm-hmm. and be graded um but there wouldn't be any like add material i mean like right. you wanted them to add no. material so is that curious, but... or or you could just have them come in and do all that stuff and then the town could just spray calcium chloride on the top of it as more of like a dust control measure no i don't, I don't if, think if you go with the calcium chloride it's it's usually like an extra um probably like dollar and a half per square yard mm-hmm. so it would probably raise that price by another i don't know it's fourteen thousand squares so you know you're probably going to add another eighteen thousand dollars to that quote yeah my i guess my feeling about it is certainly torn um people that bought homes on that road it's pavement it was pavement when they bought it and so it it certainly there's that aspect to to consider so that's why i wonder about would it be if you're going to do that would it be better for them if it was the chloride was done in the mix so that when it was graded if you did the three quarters of a gallon per square yard is that going to benefit I mean, is it just going to tighten the road faster? Or does it really not make it? Yeah, it really difference? depends on what's underneath it. If, if the material underneath it isn't good and you just mix chloride with... With crap? Yeah, you just continue to get crap. Right? Yeah. So, and I think Jeff Gilman had alluded to there might be, may not want to know what's underneath that. Yeah. You know, I pavement. Think that's I mean, I don't think any of us, not many of us know what's underneath there, but... Thank you. I'm just going to put it back to gravel. I'm going to call it gravel because that's what I'm hoping is in there. But it also... If you when we you spend a half a million dollars, you're going to do it in the middle of the summer when you have no idea about water and drainage and whatnot. If you put it back to gravel now, mm-hmm. and it's going to be five years before we pave it, we at least five, years, five to seven. You got mm-hmm. at least five years to look at it, four seasons, to see where the really bad spots are and fix them. Yes, before we put pavement over. It. Right, exactly. And Jeff has done work out there. We he we did a ditching project and he replaced some culverts and so he has done some of the infrastructure um last summer, the summer before. So um yeah, it's I don't how long is it if you put some chloride in there? How long does that would really stand up? I mean, if we get a good another flood event or another, you know, heavy yeah. Rain I mean most of most chloride type related things are like a year um because you gotta think you're gonna go through your freeze and thaw cycles and I mean, unless you know anything that's within four feet right gets frozen um during the winter time so uh, that you know it's kind Does of a, have to be reapplied on a yearly basis so that helps well i mean a lot of people surface apply it yearly we do. Um, yeah. but i mean in this case i mean it's probably going to hold up really well for a year if it's decent material underneath it but then you know, then it's going to go back to like a normal Turn gravel around. road after that. We talked about we were talked about possibly renting a uh, a compactor when we do some grading in certain areas, and that would be one area if you go to gravel. That that initial grading, which would be about now, you grade it, chloride it, and compact it. Mm-hmm. It'll it'll hold for the summer unless we get a, a major event. Yeah, I mean, if we we would pay a contractor to come in, that would be part of the bid. Would be for them to roll it and. I assume five. no, but he was just saying in general. You mean in we general? About in general. I see. Yeah, rolling. Right. We did talk about that. Rolling behind grading, but mm-hmm. um, um <clears throat> so what's the feeling about you know people that that bought homes on pavement? That it. I mean, if that if they do it anything like what was done on Christian Hill, that Christian Hill when they got ready to pave it, that was like pavement. Mm-hmm. But for a while, it could be rough. Well, like to, you put the chloride to it, it's going to be there a long time. Well, have you heard uh, anybody complain about it or say that, you know, they bought homes, it was blacktop and they wanted to stay that way? You probably... Well, Mrs. Mrs. LeBac did, but other than that, who else? I mean, I haven't heard anybody say that. I think they'd be glad to have anything, but what's will Well, maybe now, because it's even worse than it was when we talked about it last year, but there was a couple of people, not just not just Mrs. Levesque. There was a couple people in that shorter run. Um, You know, I mean, so, you know, it's just, I understand the job is do what's in the best interest of Bethel as a whole, but it's also, you know, you have some compassion because people live there. But I think in the long run, it's probably the best option is, as you said, to take it back to dirt, Brian, like you said last week. And and we certainly have had multiple um, complaints. I actually thought one of the gentlemen would be here tonight. that uh, Mr. Delgado's been in and called and 
been in a couple times and called and talked about it. So if we put this out to bid, it's going to take a minute <clears throat> to get it done. So, so you sell gravel, me? excuse me. That goes on. We sell past our car. You bet you still have to drive down the, you know, out of the road. So, Whoa. so it wouldn't be worth going out and patching the potholes, but how long until any, how long until, I have no idea how long it would take us to get somebody to come in there and take that to gravel because I, schedules are busy. What I would do is I, I wouldn't chloride it, but I would, I would take it all the dirt and I would probably use some of our gravel budget this year to hit that first mile and a half of road with New gravel. How? Or, eight. I don't know. I mean, but uh, I guess it depends on what your, what the cross slope looks like there yeah. and, and to get it to drain, you know, I don't know. I, I would say you probably put at least, you know, half foot of gravel on that, yeah. that road. And um, that would be my recommendations. I don't, I mean, the, the chloride is great for one season, but for the extra, say, eighteen to $20,000, you're going to pay for one year of, right. Versus you could probably put down, close to that and gravel that will be longer and, and, you know, more, but, but that's the kind of the way I would go. And, and then by doing that, you know, when we talk about a half million dollars to redo that road there, the reclamation, taking it to dirt is part of that number as well as gravel is part of that number. So we could, you know, eat into some of that. So maybe it won't be a half a million dollars. Maybe it'll be more like Four hundred thousand dollars when we have to seven years now it'll be half a million dollars. Well, yeah, it could be a million dollars. The rate of inflation at this point, right? Well, I'll be in dirt roads again. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's well, it's no paved roads anyway. Six inches of gravel for the first mile. But, you know, I you know do up the math on it. I mean, I I'd say you'd probably want to go up there and spread, you know, a thousand or yeah. so tons worth of gravel in that mile and a half. And um, um, but my question is, um, is how you know if we put this out to bid obviously the potholes are there now if we put this out to bid we probably won't i don't know how fast we would get a contractor to do it so right. so my question is so do we go out and pothole patch mm -hmm. um to you know to make it a little bit safer um now knowing that we're going to you know are take you, are we really close to the road five miles now? Mm -hmm. well we can't legally do that so <laughs> but um hey, what they, i went up that I met somebody that was doing the dodge thing and they weren't looking at me. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I, I guess it depends on what you want to do. I mean, you could have like a, you know, you could throw together like a, a really fast bit and have it like an emergency bit and, you know. Yeah. I mean, typically when you bid something, you bid it and it's out there for a week or two. Exactly. So everybody gets a chance while, to go like look at weeks, it. Yeah. Or you could just, you know, call up a couple of contractors, get a number and just have them come out, you know, whoever can get here in two weeks time. Yep that's okay. reasonable or something like that, or um, sure. that would be my guess on it that you could do. So that's the consensus of the board then? Yeah. Take it to gravel? Yeah. I mean, right now it's like a chicane going up through there. You've got you doing yeah. all this. You'd, you'd be there for a year just trying to patch. There's, so I'll make a I was up there Thursday. Calls. It's like there's, there's many of them that you can find your path, <laughs> but then there's a couple of them that you it have to run over, over you know, stuff. like, so it's, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, well, that's your, so yeah. We can get it. Huh? Yeah, we can get it. Yep. And, and usually, you know, any, any larger company can do that in probably a day to top. So, I mean, it's not like a long time. Um, they can take it down pretty quick. Okay. All right, that's what we're going to do. So when they call, I'm going to be giving them Brian Wright's number. So <laughs> that, that's Brian, B-R, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian, Brian put the pressure on, yep. He caved under pressure. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything further on that? No. No. Anything that we didn't cover on the town manager's report? Yep. So um, Jay McDonald, uh, there's a little bit of warranty work that's going to ha possibly happen on the top. I think uh, Jay McDonald and Dubois and King and the state are getting together to look at um, 
little bit on the the big culvert at the very top that we that they had done. Um, so there may be a little bit of warranty work there. Um, just to remind people that property taxes are due Wednesday, May fifteenth, uh, to be postmarked by then if, if they're not in the office. And also the tax sale uh, is Thursday, May 16th at 11 a.m. at the town office. So there is something in the packet showing which properties are um, going up for tax sale. So that's happening Thursday, May 16th at the town Some office. Have Some have been redeemed, yep. But the one that's on the website... It means that whoever, that somebody came in and paid them off, either the bank or oh. the owner, or so they're not going up for tax sale. But currently oh. we do have a few. We have a couple that abut, uh, two properties that abut out on Hidden Glen, and that's a big chunk of property um, if they were to be purchased by the same person. Where? Hidden Glen is in East Bethel, headed out on 14. It's the right before Gage Road. A little bit just before yeah, yeah on the right yeah yep. and Thanks. yeah <laughs> so um also we have the may 21st uh of a kickoff meeting with fema we're just starting the december i wrote 2024 the december 2023 flood event okay. so we're just putting those damages together and aj was out inspecting all the culverts on campbrook road and the sugar hill culvert um, was okay in July, but it is not okay now. I went up to double check his, look at his photos and look at the area. And I have emailed um, Chris Bump at the state to let him know. He said he thinks it's federal highways or FEMA, not federal highway, but yet federal highway had paid for some work there. So I'm having him clarify if it's within a certain right of way or how that works. So that could end up being a FEMA project. We had looked at the pricing on that about two years ago i think you're not two years ago it's over a million bucks that's a big thing. it is a big just putting another steel corrugated steel pipe in there or i are have gonna do like a an arch or a box i or? have no idea but what is going to be very interesting is the access to get people out of there i don't know how you get in out of there. i don't know kind how to shut that road down okay. i think well not sugar hill there's really no other way to get in and out of there yeah. right so I don't know yet. Not very wide. No, it's I not know. very wide. And um, so anyway, so that just came to light. So I'm waiting for Chris Bump's response, and then we'll see. That's <clears throat> my guess is at I'm this point. Trail. We're down by gym yeah, it won't be. It won't be a when we they did the pricing because they uh the state was and feds were look had a program out where there was going to be a ninety ten split, but you had to do a cost benefit analysis and uh, Vermont Emergency Management was paying for the cost benefit analysis and they worked with two rivers and myself and and they were talking about putting a bridge in there and that it wouldn't be another culvert that it'd be a bridge and i think it was it was over a million but it wasn't it had not sustained enough damage in past floods so there was no cost benefit to it, it i don't know it's crazy math if you ask me but anyway so we're we could be taking a look at that now um did we get all our fema money are you kidding well, I, Peter Welch was he was yeah. pumping his fist this weekend on how great FEMA's done and yeah and I was thinking I don't remember we've even gotten a dime yet we haven't and um we have several of our plot projects have been obligated but um KJ is coming back this week or next week we've been working over the phone we had a meeting on Friday and um so hopefully we will have all of our projects from July obligated. They've had some real issues and um, hopefully we'll have them obligated within a couple of weeks. Um, we had talked about, the state did reach out to me about a, the grant and you know that's how they do it was with a grant agreement, but currently no. So we're gonna start moving ahead with the December flood event and that's damages on Woodland, uh, Royalton Hill Road, uh, again at the pump station, um, Finley Bridge, there's a small part near the bridge. So I think, so we don't have a ton of damage from that. I mean, unless this unless this um, culvert comes into that. Then did that upper Gilead stuff, did that get ripped out in the winter storm? No. No? No. And, um, and that was awarded to um, Jeff Townsend. And I'm hoping, he was going to call you about staking it out. But he did, I said. I don't know anything about this job. <laughs> 
So, so he's, uh, I haven't heard back from yet, but he was starting. I was hoping he was going to yeah, start this I, week. And and heard I was being manager on this job. No, I didn't know. He told me he was going to call you. So I didn't I know if he had much power in this town. Yeah. yeah so he said, uh, so he'll. I'm calling the door up and down Sand Hill Road to get to the back field. Uh, so I'll have to call Jeff. Oh. All right. I'll call Jeff Townsend tomorrow because he. Um... Yeah, he left me a message earlier. Okay. I hadn't. I haven't heard back from him, but I was hoping he was going to start. He thought he could start this week. So I'm like, the yeah. sooner the better. Um, so that's everything. Um, so we have a new utility person, Philip Robinson. He starts May 20th. Um, and we're still interviewing for the uh, assistant town clerk lister office position. Um, we had, we've done an interview and then, uh, we have another one this Thursday. You said you had somebody that was interested in the board seat for. We do. Warva. Yeah. Frank, I think it's Cyrillus. I apologize if I've just said his name wrong. He's going to attend their next meeting and, um, he has a lot of emergency management history as also finance management. Mm -hmm. So he may be able to fill that role as treasurer. Okay. And, um, so he is going to attend their meeting and see if they, he was a good, had a good feel for it. And then he was going to get back to mm -hmm. me and then the select board would officially appoint him on June 10th. Gotcha. So. so you've now there's a bunch of stuff in your packet. All right. Yeah, there was quite a bit. Uh, well, we'll get to the select board meeting minutes from the 22nd. Any changes on that? Are we good to approve as written? Oh, it needs to say minutes at the top instead of a select board agenda. I just saw that. I didn't realize it till just now. Okay. Anything else? If not, just need a motion to approve as amended. Okay, all in favor? Aye. And there were a bunch of communications in our packet. Um, trustee of Public Funds, the Rec Committee was in there. Um, no? Uh, Planning Commission was in there. There was... Um, Conservation Committee and then um, the Sheriff's Department had put their their activities in there. And got your designation and renewal. Yep. For downtown. And then there was the tax sale information that was in there. Yeah, so that shows there's, yeah, 77 Hidden Glen, 171 Hidden Glen, um, 2574 Gilead Brook Road, and there's one, oh, I thought it was, oh, no, that's it, I guess. I guess we're just down to four, down to those three. What was it, three? Yep. And so the Hidden Glen, Hidden Glen, and Gilead. All right. So it could be yours. If you just come to the to the tax sale. You could be yeah, that could be yours. <laughs> so or you just sit on your money for a year and they pay it off and right and you get all the good interest. All right. Anything any other business to come before the board this evening? All right, let's need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So, second, second, third, whatever. All right, have a good evening.